I hope you guys like my glasses. And I think they're dope. My name is Ness, and today we are going to do a really fun video. Today's video, I'm going to dedicate it to one of my favorite YouTubers, content creator, filmmakers, Dan Mace. This video has been done a couple times before. Some people try to recreate his intro and I want to do my own spin. I kind of want to do it because I really love seeing that intro. If you haven't seen the intro, here it is. So that is Dan's intro. I'm gonna go to the store and I'm gonna gather some materials. A big thank you to Audrey Ember. Most of my process is going to be inspired on her process. And I think she did an amazing job in recreating this intro. So let's go to the store. Now I'm on my way to gather the materials. I am here with my taxi driver, Rich. He's uh, taking me to the store so I can grab everything I need. Um, hopefully we can find it. Because of the fire festival, I'm not gonna tell you where I'm at. Here we <laughs> go. <laughs> I'm gonna try the hyper smooth stabilization here sure. with this thing. It's definitely having the, the shakes. This is my canvas. I'm gonna paint it how I want it. No? Okay. Okay, sweet. So, I think I can grab one of these brushes. I'll grab this one. Oh, you know what I should get? And this? Yes. These two. Let's see. Grab it. That's fine. All right. That's okay. Grab three just in case I mess it up. This should be good. That's not even safe for us. Right there, guys. I think we got all the materials. Time to go home and start slapping it. <laughs> Bro, just mac it. Another damn Mace reference that he didn't get. Now I'm back in the office. I got my setup ready. So I put the paper I'm gonna use to paint. I got everything here with the water. If you're curious about how I made this overhead rig, I'm gonna link the description below. Um, I watched Daniel Schiffer and he gave really great tip and a really great method of building this overhead rig but i'll link his video so you can see the process that he did to get this amazing setup which is going to help me do this today and rich is just working on something else as well so also because i can't you know sony is not the best when it comes to flip screens and i kind of want to keep track of it i'm going to be using my ipad with the play memory app so that way I can see what's happening. So this should be fun. I think this is a pretty solid attempt. What do you say camera? So now that we did this, let's take this to post and see how it looks. Now we're back on the desk and the first thing I'm gonna do on the computer is look for a song because this is probably gonna be the most annoying part of my process that's gonna take me a while because I gotta look for a song I like. I don't necessarily wanna use the same song Dan used, even though it's dope. But I'm gonna go to Epidemic Sound and I'm going to search for a song, so I'll see you in two hours. Also, before I go, this is not an advertisement. This is just the website that I use to look for royalty-free music. I'm gonna link it below if you wanna check it out. But again, this is not an ad. It didn't take as long as I expected to find a song, but 
it was annoying. So here on the screen, I'm gonna show you how the clip turned out after I painted my name. The first thing that you're gonna notice is that each time I did a stroke, I would put the pencil away. That way I could have a clean plate with each stroke that I did. Then at the end, this is what I came up with. This is how it ended up looking. I think this is pretty solid. It looks a lot like the one that Dan did. Every time I would do a stroke, I would make a cut, clean plate, shift, delete, bam. At the end of the cutting, I ended up with this. Just make sure that each shot lasted one frame so it can match that of the intro and then this is how it looks. After that, I did an adjustment layer with the color correction to match the look that I was looking for. So for the second part of this project, what I did was I found a random book and I just ripped the pages off and it was like a schedule book. So what I did was I put all the pages and then I proceeded to crumble them up. And what I'm going to do is, is that's going to pan and reverse so I can play off that newspaper part. So what I did here, once I took photos of the paper getting unfolded and flat on the table, I went online and I found newspaper on Google and that's what I used to transition it with. I shot it backwards from what you see in the video. So what I did was I had it laid down on the table and then I just moved it around and then it began to take form until it rolled out of the way. Then I grabbed the newspaper that I found online and I kind of did the same thing, but digitally put it for a few frames. And so that way it could loop around for the next effect to show up and to kind of match the other newspaper. What I did was some color correction magic and made it black and white. Now, next on my list will be grabbing a photo of me. I think I gotta like cut it out and try to make it seem like I'm turning into a cartridge. I want to do that. And what I want to do <laughs> is a reference to... I'll mute myself here because I kind of spoiled what I was going to do in the tutorial. But basically, I'm going to show you how I made myself a cartridge, inserted myself on the system and became the game. Now, I'll show you how I did the cartridge sequence. Basically, at first, I wanted to turn myself into the cartridge, go in a Nintendo and have it blow up. But I think this works better. And what I did for the picture, I opened Photoshop, made it look like paper, made, made some frame by frame adjustments, added directional blur. Then I grabbed the cartridge. I erased the contents. I wrote my name as the title of the cartridge. Then I went online and found some photos of the system with the top open, found some others with the top halfway open and the top closed. I made some lighting effects. I didn't spend too much time working on them because I didn't want to take away that homemade feel that the video has. Now for this part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how I did the static sequence, which transitions to press start on the screen which made it seem a little bit video game-ish, which was the approach I was trying to take with this video. I found a TV on Google, an old school TV, and I grabbed footage from Times Square and also from Grand Central and not just strain. It's Adobe stock. I didn't do much. I didn't pay for the photos, I know. <laughs> Did some masking as well to make the whole static. Once that was done, I just zoomed it in, put an old projector to help with the transition and made it seem like a video game. Morning, it's the next day. I went outside with the GoPro. I recorded the hyperlapse and I'm going to slap it in and see how it looks. This right here is the final look of the hyperlapse. That was the shot. I zoomed it in. I did the digital full focus and it created that cool effect. And then I added a little bit of color correction. And right after that, the next thing I did was I found some stock footage of paint online and it helped me finish that last part of the video. And what I did was I added a little bit of wave warp to it. And once the circle goes in, I disappear. And then the episode title comes in. Now, with that being said, the video is done. 
I'm going to show you the composition and how my version of the intro came out. I hope you guys liked it. But before I get to that, I want to mention that this was a lot of fun. Just going to the store, gathering materials and just getting everything done. I did not think I was going to have this much fun. A big thank you to Audrey and Burr for making her version of the video. Her process is what inspired me to get this done. And also thanks Dan for being such a big inspiration for filmmakers like us who are just out here trying to make it. So without further ado, here's my video, brew. Naturally as you began on this adventure of dreams, 